Good morning. Nearly 14 years ago, on that horrific day when our nation was under attack and 2,977 people lost their lives, thousands of heroes came to Ground Zero on September 11th and the days that followed. In our darkest hours, our brightest lights shone, ordinary men and women who showed the world what extraordinary bravery, courage, and determination look like. They were our first responders who ran up burning buildings while civilians ran out to safety. They were people from all walks of life who live in all 50 states. In fact, 429 out of 435 congressional districts who scrambled through the rubble of the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, looking for survivors, and then did the very hard work of looking for remains and cleaning up. Some of them were experts in their fields, and some of them were simple volunteers willing to risk their lives in a dangerous place when our nation needed them most. Simply put, they answered the call of duty when our nation was under attack, and they deserve to be treated by Congress as the veterans they really are. Sadly, now 14 years later, these men and women, these ultimate patriots, are suffering for their sacrifice. Some are sick, others are dying, and too many have already been lost due to the toxins they breathed in from the rubble at Ground Zero. In fact, more police have died from 9-11 illnesses than died on the actual day. More than 33,000 9-11 responders and community survivors, including area residents, workers, and children harmed by the disaster, have an illness or injury that was caused by the attacks or their aftermath. And over two-thirds of these men and women have more than one illness. So far, over 3,800 9-11 survivors and responders have been found to have 9-11-related cancer. At least 1,700 heroes have already been laid to rest by their families from various illnesses, including James Zadroga. I'd like to recognize his father, Mr. Joseph Zadroga, who has fought for this bill every step of the way. Thank you, Joe. Congress has an undeniable, inescapable, moral obligation to provide these heroes with sufficient health care and proper compensation. We are a nation that stands by our heroes, that stands by our first responders, and stands by our firefighters, cops, and veterans. That is who we are. I was so proud that more than four years ago, when Congress came together, led by our united New York congressional delegation, Congresswoman Maloney, Congressman Nadler, Congressman King, and our senior and superb Senator Great Schumer, chance. who <laughs> closed the deal at the 11th hour, very important to fulfill that moral obligation by passing the James Desdroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act. But our work is not done. These critical 9-11 programs are set to begin to expire this year, and they must be renewed. Because if we don't, Congress will be walking away from our duty to stand by these heroes. They still need our help. While we have potentially a long fight ahead of us to make sure our 9-11 responders and survivors continue to have access to the health care and compensation that they critically need, I am optimistic. I'm optimistic because of what you see in front of you, Democrats and Republicans, from the Senate and the House, working together, hand in hand, to ensure that Congress does not turn its back on our heroes. I want to thank Senator Murkowski and Senator Kirk for their strong leadership in championing this bill on their side of the aisle in the Senate. There is no doubt that these heroes will once again walk the hallways of Congress day after day, week after week, month after month, even year after year if they have to. But this should not be on them. It should be on us to do the right thing. And we shouldn't take a Christmas miracle to make this happen again. We must meet our responsibility head on because if we fail to do so, many heroes continuing to suffer from terrible 9-11 related illnesses will be left on their own. 
That cost in terms of human suffering and what it means to our values as a nation is too much to bear. By working across the aisle, I hope we can ensure that every 9-11 responder and eligible survivor who was injured or made ill by the toxins at Ground Zero will continue to receive the medical care and compensation they need and deserve. They are counting on us, and it would be shameful as a nation if we let them down. 